If you build shareable dashboards, then adding a date filter can be a really great way to let your end user customize the data. I'm Amy Hebden with Paid Search Magic, and I'm going to show you how to add a date filter and how to make sure it's set up correctly so that your information is properly controlled. Now, if you have not used a date filter or you're just not very familiar with it, it can be really confusing as to what information um, just basically what's happening with the date filter. So I've got some very basic and simple charts here to help illustrate how this is all gonna work. So I've got two columns, as you can see, with identical charts in each one. And one says auto and one says custom. Now, the first chart is a time series. You can control the charts over here. We could choose something different, but we're choosing a time series for the first one. The second chart is a series of time, it is not actually a time series, it is a bar chart that we are using uh, a, the time of week for a dimension, and so it's basically functioning the same way. This will also be controlled by whatever we're doing. Whatever changes we make to the date range is going to affect what we end up seeing here. Now, uh, notice that the default date range for my auto column, right here it says auto, and my default date range for the custom column is set to custom. Now, as we mentioned, these charts are identical. Um, they're both defaulting to the last 28 days. So you may be wondering, well, what's the difference between auto and custom? When I add the charts, they function exactly the same way. Well, that is true until we get to the point that we're adding that date filter. So I'm gonna go up here to the icon that says date range. I'm gonna select that and it's just gonna automatically add uh, a filter in here. I'm, I'm gonna go over to view it and we're gonna see how this works. So we're gonna go to select date range and then let's just choose this year to date. I'm gonna hit apply, move this over there. So you can see that um, these two charts in auto changed quite a bit and in custom, there are no changes. Um, so I think a good way to think of this, auto automatically changes with your date filter and custom are are charts that you customize that you get to retain control over even when there's this data filter on top. So hopefully that makes some sense. Auto automatically updates. Um, one other thing to notice here is that over the last uh, five months of data, our bar chart stops showing data after March 25th. So it's not showing us exactly what we expect. The first chart that's a time series, it goes all the way through the end of May. Uh, this one does not. And the reason for that is that we have in our bar chart, um, there's a default number of bars that are going to show up. So if I go over to style, I can actually change the number of bars here. So I could change this to 20. Um, and so we'll see something different now when I go back to view. I'll just select, uh, select that date range again. One second. So go to this year to date, apply. And now we see it goes all the way through May, right? But um, this kind of puts us at a disadvantage if, if we really wanted to be using the, the bar series, like we have no control over what our end user is gonna change. If they go to 100 weeks back, it doesn't make sense for us to add 100 uh, bars or infinity bars to account for all of that. So it's usually best if we're giving our end user control that we kind of stay with time series um, or else we're gonna run into problems where they're just not able to see the information that they're intending to see and it just creates a bit of a misalignment with what that expectation is. Now you saw that when I was when I flipped back over here I had to re-choose my date range and that's because I'm just I I have it set up just to auto. And like I said, auto is 28 days until we say something different. So instead of having it be on the auto date range, like let's just say I want it to be uh I don't know, last quarter so that when my end user is looking at the data, they're not always having to go back and pick something different. So when I choose that default date range, it's automatically here. I don't have to select anything. I can, but I don't have to. So one final note on how this is all going to work is that this uh, the date filter can either be applied at the report level, meaning that it's uh, it's applying to every single page in the report, or it can be at a page level. Now it defaults to page level, but if I wanted to change it to report level, I just go up here to arrange. I would just select make report level, and just like that, 
this is automatically going to control every single page in the report. Uh, you can still, um, you know, choose the drop down and choose to edit it as you go, but it'll default with the same information. And it'll just show up on every single page because it's it's applied at a report level. So at this point, you may be thinking, okay, well, auto is obviously the way to go. It makes it easier to just to work with in here that I can control everything by the date range. Uh, it makes it easier to show you know, for the end user to see why would I want to use custom. Um, there are some really good reasons to use custom, uh, especially in the last month. Uh, data Studio has a lot more available options for some really advanced data that you can create some really good uh, custom reports with, custom data sets. So I will create another video that's going to show you when you might want to use custom and how you can use advanced date ranges to really get some amazing reports. So that'll be on the next one, and I'll link to it here. Um, but hopefully that helps. Uh, adding uh, the date range filter is really easy. You just have to understand that it's only going to apply to your uh, charts that say auto. If they're not auto, if they're custom, it's not going to affect them. Uh, if this did help, please give it a like. Uh, leave comments below if you have any questions or if there's other videos that you'd like to request. And please be sure to subscribe to get more tutorials on how to create better dashboards and reports with Data Studio. Thanks.